Well, howdy y'all. I'm going to try and briefly explain how the abortion issue evolved in the United States and how it has affected other areas of American politics. I understand that I have been doing a lot of videos on abortion lately and that it seems like a weird issue for me to cover, so I will be using this video to segue into some other topics I have been working on, and I will try to get back to more, you know, humorous and intellectual videos. But, as for abortion. Now, as Coltane pointed out, back in the early 1900s, abortion was officially illegal, but the numbers show roughly a third of women had had an abortion, and that roughly a fifth to a full third of all pregnancies were aborted. Most of these abortions were performed by doctors in the privacy of the doctor's office. Abortion always was uh, America's dirty little secret. You see, um, m medical practices were different back then. There were not so many people involved, no insurance companies approving procedures and payments, and, and the laws were very simple and clear. Most of the laws relied on doctors' ethics to keep them in line, and trusted that they were more concerned with saving the patients' lives than with m making money. Um, because back then, doctors didn't necessarily make that much money. It was a profession one went into for the, the status, or to simply help people and to save lives. But the doctor's office was private, like a, a lawyer's office. And like a lawyer's office, what is said between the professional and the patient or client is uh, confidential. So abortions were performed by doctors back then in secret uh, because of Planned Parenthood. And I, I mean that in the, the, the literal sense, not the aptly named organization that started because of this concept. Yes, doctors went against their Hippocratic Oath and extracted women's children from them at the, the women's requests to help these women manage their families, you know, planning their parenthood, managing their families. And yes, many of these women probably didn't inform their husbands that they were pregnant again. And the doctor, uh, and the, the doctors had to conspire with these women to help them manage their families. The doctors were allowed to do this because of the doctor-patient privilege, and society respected that what happened behind the closed doors of a doctor's office was no one else's business, including the government's. Women have always controlled their bodies with respect to reproduction. Male and female doctors conspire and assist women in uh, their controlling reproduction. This is a form of female power, the power to choose life or death. To, to be the arbiters of humanity's fertile future. This is why women talk about it so much, and why feminists focus like a laser beam on the her-body-her-choice issue. Because it is not about choice to them. It is about power. Power to control humanity's destiny. Via, oddly, controlling their mate's reproductive future, or reproductive destiny. Power by proxy, of course, like always. But the doctors went along with it anyways, because it seemed um, the right thing to do, especially for poor people, or f uh, for women that already had several children and simply did not want any more. These women were uh, waiting for menopause's sweet release, but did not want to get their uh, tubes tied or a hysterectomy because they wanted to keep their reproductive value, their, their power, as long as they could. They wanted to, to game their men, or the system, or the society. Their husbands did not want to use condoms for a number of different reasons, both social and personal, but effectively, if you are married to someone, you are probably having unprotected sex with them. All this was done before the invention of the birth control pill. Now, where this brief essay is different than Coltane's report is that I wish to talk about and walk you through how the doctor's general desire to save lives was affected by the invention of the birth control pill, and how that invention interacted with doctors' ethics, and how that interaction affected American legal philosophy, and, and led to a lot of what we're seeing today, a sort of addendum to Coltane's video. So when the birth control pill was invented, doctors were no longer forced, forced to perform abortions. They had an ethical out, a pharmaceutical and ethical option to offer women, a, a, a medical miracle, a magic pill that a woman could take, in secret if need be. And doctors all know how good women are at lying, manipulating, and keeping secrets. Right, guys? Right, docs? Right? All right, well, 
Okay, so now doctors can perform one final abortion on a patient and prescribe her birth control pills and tell her uh, to take them, like a medication, if she wants to continue having unprotected sex or using unprotected sex to manipulate or manage her family via her husband. Doctors finally had a rational option out of extracting women's children from them. Yeah, you know, read uh, Ron Paul's commentaries on his m medical residency uh, with respect to some of the abortions he says doctors performed decades ago. Uh, children literally taken out of their mother's womb uh, and then thrown into a garbage can uh, while moving and making noises. And all the doctors stood there and let the child die because that is what the mother wanted. Yeah, the life of a doctor is, is, is hard. And it was really hard back in the day for, like, family practitioners and the like. So doctors would prefer not to, to kill children. Fine. Fair enough. <laughs> we can all understand that one. And we can also understand women's willingness to have their children thrown in the dumpsters. Right. All these things are supported. We can all understand them. Since doctors tend not to like killing children, and women seem not to mind it, the laws had to be changed because doctors were outright refusing to perform abortions on their patients. And this pissed women off. Because they could not actually go public with the issue because abortions were officially illegal. It would be like saying, uh, hey, this mercenary is refusing to murder the people I'm paying the murder. Uh, yeah, buddy, murder is illegal in America. You may want to take your mercenary elsewhere. So like with the morning after pill and some pharmacists refusing to fill those prescriptions and companies refusing to offer their employees medical insurance coverage that includes birth control pills, women complained and nagged men and how the laws were changed to make abortion legal. And true to form, what women did was use the very privacy of the doctor's office as a defense. They pretty much let the cat out of the bag so they could again return to, you know, murdering their own children with impunity to keep their power over man inside their control. If you ever read uh, the actual Roe vs. Wade case, it is based on uh, the American philosophical idea of uh, right to privacy. And that whatever happens behind closed doors is no one's business. Also, that doctors are a valued profession in society and that they get certain privileges, like the privilege of being off offered to perform an abortion, an illegal act in the past, and then not being a being required to report the said solicitation of the crime to the police. Right back in the day, a patient could actually walk in and say, I want an abortion. And even if the doctor refused to do it, he, he then couldn't turn her in for the solicitation of the illegal abortion. You can't do that. Violate attorney or violate doctor patient privilege. And so it's a trap, so she could, you know, ask for one. What happened was before uh, doctors would just do it because they felt they had no other option. When you started giving them other options besides abortion, the masses of doctors started taking it and refusing to perform abortions. And it would upset women. So since anti abortion legislation is effectively unenforceable, uh, because it would violate uh, an American's Fourth and Fifth Amendment rights protections, uh, the, the right to privacy and the right to refuse self-incrimination, the right to refuse to self-incriminate. Abortion legislation was effectively nullified. The woman in the case was a vile, disgusting human being that literally hated men and would have sex with men just to get pregnant so that she could then abort the children. She was a self-proclaimed lesbian, but um, also used sex as a way to uh, use men and hurt men. She was a fairly appalling human being, but even she still has her right to medical privacy. And if she found a doctor that enjoyed getting paid to perform abortions, remember, some doctors are ice cold. Some of them have no real concern for others' lives. That's the doctor and the patient's private business. These abortions were then made easier when medical ethicists started quibbling about when life actually begins and when a fetus can experience pain or whatever. Those issues are all immaterial to, to the privacy issue. But those issues actually matter a great deal to the human beings performing the abortions. This is why feminists and women talk about those issues so much. They're not actually addressing the legal issue. They're addressing the issue to make everyone feel better about it. Because, yeah, it's pretty much killing children, ripping them out of their own mother's wombs. I mean, it's, it's pretty, you know, if anyone decides a doctor did it, it would clearly be a felony. But now, we have the philosophical issue of, are people compelled to do what others pay them to do? Especially if that person is in that profession, like a doctor or a pharmacist. What about a doctor with professional privilege to refuse to perform certain procedures? In philosophy, they call this the slippery slope fallacy. 
But in the legal world, they call it, they call this precedence. Yes, this idea of a right to an abortion, this idea of a, a right to an abortion, or a right to a medical procedure, a right to someone else's knowledge, skills, abilities, a right to other people's services, was made more concrete in the minds of Americans during the Civil Rights Act, or during the Civil Rights Movement, and second wave feminism. The Civil Rights Movement started on a very simple premise. American citizens have the right to vote, and the exercise of this right should not be made too difficult by those that have the power over this right. Fine. Fair enough. But this philosophical issue was lumped in with the social issue of race and services that are open to the public, like restaurants and, and restrooms. Yes, a, a business owner does not have to provide services to anyone he does not like. But he cannot make blanket bans against people of a certain race or religion. A business owner cannot refuse to serve a certain. A, a business owner can refuse to serve a certain black man, but he cannot refuse to serve all black men. But this bled over into second wave feminism, where they changed race to gender. Remember, this is how these feminist and social justice warriors think. They mix factors between each other. They don't understand certain things like just because math and money share numbers in common does not mean they are the same thing and that you can apply calculus to money. Money does not grow simply because numbers exist and math uses them as well. But yeah, whatever. They now have this idea that they are entitled to certain procedures and services, that they are entitled to the actions of others. And if those people do not perform the actions, they feel they are entitled to. It is not because the person does not want to do those actions, but because that person hates blacks or women or whatever in general. Uh, that person's a bigot. Yeah, that person's the problem, not them. You see, when abortion was illegal, doctors were doing them anyways because they felt they had no other option. And even after the birth control pill was invented, Women still wanted abortions, but were finding it harder and harder to get them performed. But we were still left with a past record of doctors performing abortions pretty much on demand and in secret. So women got the idea that doctors were doing the abortions anyway, but for others. Because they were doing it for decades before secretly. So the doctors must still be performing the abortions, just not for the women that are asking. So the women are thinking that they're just not doing it for the women they don't like. So, so those women... It seemed unfair. But even if this was true, even if the doctors were refused were performing abortions for one patient and not for another, that's his personal choice. Right? Some patients would get certain procedures and other patients don't. That's what he gets to choose. That's his per professional privilege as a doctor. I'll keep on to that thought, though. And like a doctor, a restaurant owner can refuse to serve any individual customer if he doesn't like that customer personally. But if the owner has a personal dislike of all customers of a certain race, then it is illegal for the owner to impose his personal racist beliefs onto others. You can't treat people differently without getting to know them first. But now, with the thought that people refuse services because of race, you have women believing people refuse services because of sex, specifically the abortion service, uh, women have framed the issue as they literally have a right to an abortion, when in fact you have no rights that compel others to do things for you, especially doctors, because doctors have certain privileges granted to them by society. Thus, unlike a doctor, a business owner does not have the privilege to refuse service. So now, this evolved into what we see in current American politics during feminism's third wave women saying they are entitled to free birth control or entitled to have abortions covered under their employer's uh, health insurance. Female students demanding female-only areas or safe areas. Black students feeling entitled to, ironically, segregated areas for themselves. And homosexuals demanding bakeries bake them a cake. The entitlement culture was ironically born from the effects of the birth control from the effects the birth control pill had on American law. Couple this with legitimate legal issues that blacks were having at the same time. You can see where the confusion came in. Now to clear up some of the confusion, and, and hopefully this is quick, this is taking far longer than I planned. Alright. Americans have the right to vote. 
and the people that make up the government cannot make voting too difficult for others to exercise, and definitely cannot prevent it based on anything about uh, the citizen but the content of the citizen's character, as in being a felon. The government cannot allow one group of people to exercise a right while prohibiting another group of people from exercising that same right. Yeah, the government can prevent individual people from exercising certain rights, but the government cannot prevent groups of people. Therefore, state and local governments cannot allow heterosexual people to marry while preventing homosexual people from marrying. Doctors are allowed to perform abortions. They always were. But now what is happening is that a woman is allowed to openly go looking for one. She's allowed to ask a doctor for an abortion without worrying about committing a crime. Doctor is now, and always was, allowed to refuse to perform an abortion on anyone for any reason. That is his privilege. But like with the restaurant, if a doctor owns a clinic that specializes in abortions and advertises that they are doing abortions, because women are now allowed to ask and shop around for one, that doctor cannot then refuse to perform abortions on, let's say, black patients. Why? Because the doctor demonstrated a habitual willingness to perform abortions for others. This goes into the issue about bakeries and homosexual cakes. And on that note, a brief aside. You don't have to make a cake for anyone. But if you already made a cake and you are in the business of selling cakes, you cannot then refuse to sell that cake to someone just because they are gay. Now, if you sell an already made cake, and then the customer offers to pay you to write something you disagree with, you do not have to take the money and write whatever the customer asks you to. You are not entitled to have other people serve you unless they willingly accept payment from you for that service. It is really that simple. The only part that is not simple is where this leads into transgendered bathrooms. <laughs> because of civil codes and the aptly named civil rights movement, when business owners choose to open a business that meets the requirements to have a bathroom built for their employees and or customers, they have to provide a bathroom for men and a bathroom for women. Period. You cannot have a bathroom for certain races. That's illegal. But having bathrooms for sexes is legal because, unlike race, America legally acknowledges that men and women are different and that they each have a right to privacy. And if a business owner wants to invite people into his business, then the owner has to have a bathroom for men and a bathroom for women. Why? Because men and women have a right to privacy. And essentially it goes down to mating, the mating game. Men and women shouldn't be forced to share a bathroom because there's supposed to be some sort of mystery. There's supposed to be some sort of dichotomy, some privacy. Imagine being forced to whoop it out in front of a woman. Imagine there's a urinal and a woman's just standing next to it for some reason. Imagine just having to, you know, whip it out, pee. It has to be some privacy. Yeah, you know, ladies, imagine a guy just standing next to the stall while you're taking a dump. Just sort of breathing. There has to be some sort of privacy. It has to be. All right. Now, I have seen a business owner solve this problem. You just have to have two bathrooms that are private and uh, only have enough room for one person at a time. Label one male and one female, and no one will know if the person in the bathroom is actually male or female. Uh, this solution only becomes a problem when you are dealing with large numbers of people. But essentially, it is a personal issue. Where it becomes a legal issue is governmental buildings open to large numbers of the public. Requiring citizens to use the bathroom that matches their gender on their ID card only seems legally reasonable because uh, transgendered people can get they, they can get their ID card's gender changed. You can do that. It, it is just that the government doesn't make that change very easy for, for obvious reasons. Yes, the government doesn't like changing their governmental documents a lot. Because that makes governing more difficult for them. It's already a pain in the ass dealing with people. All these weird modern day issues that we deal with when we deal with third wave feminists and social justice warriors are based on entitlement. People feeling they are entitled to their own bathroom simply because they feel they are a different gender. And if you don't provide one, it's because you are a bigot. People feeling entitled to other people making them a cake. And if you refuse, it's because you're a bigot. People feeling entitled to spaces based on races, and if you refuse to provide it, 
you are, ironically, a racist bigot. All of these entitlement issues oddly started with the birth control pill and doctors now being able to refuse to perform abortions and women getting upset about it and feeling they were entitled to abortions. Remember, first wave feminism was associated with Planned Parenthood and Planned Parenthood's founder was a was as pro-abortion as you can get. She detested the poor and their inability to control the reproductive urges. Yeah, she was pro-abortion as hell. At the same time, race was an issue. When the feminists started switching race with gender, they started to figure out how to go about getting what they wanted. Slowly, over the decades, second-wave feminism appeared, sparked by a generation of women having access to the pill. But it was never about women taking the pill or women having abortions. It was always about women controlling human reproduction, humanity's future, and controlling men by using children as a sort of consequence. Well, hell now, they, they even use children as threats. Yeah, women threatening to not have abortions. Yeah, there are women now who threaten rich men to not have an abortion. They're using children as a consequence, which is what the feminists have always said. Those six positive feminists always like, uh, you're, you're pregnant, now you're being punished. This is how they think. And finally, it's, it's the laws allowing them to expose themselves, allowing these women to reveal themselves. Think about it. Women want abortion as an option for many reasons, but among them is using children as threats, as some sort of consequence or punishment for a bad action. Pregnancies and sex were always used by women to manipulate and control men. And doctors used to go along with this because uh, there was no other option. And usually a woman asking for an abortion would be in a situation that I am sure most doctors would understand. But then doctors got to start saying no to abortions because of the birth control pill option. Thus, thrusting responsibility back onto the woman. I find it hilarious that people wonder why there are so few abortion clinics in Texas. Did you ever think it was because very few doctors like to explicitly do mostly abortions? I can't imagine a worse job for a doctor. Add to this the young Turks sounding shocked and appalled that people have to drive two and a half hours to, in some parts of Texas just to get an abortion. You have to drive two and a half hours to get anywhere in Texas, Turks. It takes me 45 minutes to an hour and a half to make it across town. And if I went all the way around this town, what kind of nonsense is this victim cry of, I had to drive two hours to get an abortion? Yeah? Well, I had to drive two hours one day to see a two hour and 45 minute long movie once. So I spent roughly seven hours away from my home just to see a movie, ladies. Really, stop it. Stop being so pathetic. All right, so that was a bit of an aside there, but I believe my idea is clear. Abortion only became an issue after the pill, the birth control pill was invented, because doctors were starting to refuse to perform abortions. Uh, women could no longer rely on any doctor to perform abortions. That's why doctors probably started creating abortion clinics. Uh, because uh, doctors would tell them uh, to use the pill. But it has never been about avoiding pregnancy. It's never been about sexual liberation. It has been about women's desire to control the power over life and death. At their core, it's what to grab onto, it's what to hold onto, the womb, the vagina, that's uterus, that's what makes them powerful. That's the root of it, because think about it. Women, by their nature, are, are smaller, weaker of mean intelligence, and had been told a Madonna whore narrative or some sort of princess-victim complex narrative their whole lives, for, for generations, that, that now uh, so many women are obviously neurotic, histrionic, narcissistic, and quite frankly sociopathic, the kinds of psychological issues that can appear when you realize that you weren't forced to abort your child. Or even have one. That you liked the feelings of power and importance it gave you. 
these would be the kind of issues you would see. And if you ever needed any more proof of how vicious and dark the female soul can be, just look at the, the women that are selling their abortions. There are women that are selling abortions. And imagine if the guy they're trying to blackmail refused to pay and he called these women's bluffs. Would she actually have the kid? Can you imagine being that child and being raised by that kind of woman? Imagine finding out that the only reason you're alive is that your father refused to pay the million dollars to have you aborted and that your mother pretty much is just using you to punish him for more than a million. That you're just sort of her... I don't know. I don't even know what the word would be. You're like a sugar daddy, but like a victim. A sugar victim. Yeah, you're her sugar victim for 20 years. Can you imagine the... Well... Peace and long life, y'all. You guys have a nice day. And always remember to go your own way. Yours truly. M.